Our family is full of giggles. We like to be spontaneous, but full of love. We love being outdoors, being goofy, just being us. So each of our kids, we've got three. Natalie, she's a deep thinker. Madison, she's my firecracker. <laughs> and then Lucas is now 10. He's my bringer of light. My name is Jessica. I was a bedside critical care therapist at Dell Children's. And my assignment that shift was in the pediatric ICU. The report was an infant coming in, very unstable, had fallen down the stairs. He was brought into our trauma hall. We quickly resuscitated him, quickly took him to the CAT scan. And then when we saw what the CT showed us, we took him to the operating room immediately. And this child, I honestly thought was gonna die. They did a surgery and found out that he had a duodenal transection, which is a relatively rare injury in children, not something you see every day. The actual injury is you cut your bowel in half. This is a big injury for anybody, much less for an infant. Because the baby had so much spillage of abdominal contents, everything had swollen. And it had swollen so much that we couldn't close the abdomen. So we put drains in and then we took him to the intensive care unit. I was working nights. We knew there was a patient coming out of the operating room that was gonna need specialized care. We pulled all of the equipment out and had everything ready. We had the intensivist and their whole team. The respiratory therapist that was assigned to this baby was Jessica. Her job was to receive the baby from the operating room and make sure the baby was ventilating appropriately. He was five weeks. Very tiny, just over five pounds. He was one of the sickest children that I have ever cared for in my 19 years of working here. We didn't know if he was gonna make it through the first night, second night, third night. The second night, there was a nurse across from me who just changed the line as quickly as she could to keep the support going. And that momentary pause made him lose his pulse. So we had to initiate CPR again in that moment. Next thing I remember is that he was absolutely getting better. His intestines were still in a silo bag until he was stable enough to go back to surgery and close his wound. Once we had stabilized him, as the team was reviewing the whole case, it didn't fit. That's when we were able to kind of put the full picture together. I had been a pediatric surgeon for 15 years, and pretty much the only other time I'd seen that injury was with a seat belt from a high-speed motor vehicle collision. The injury had to be due to a very high impact on this child's abdomen, and the story being relayed, there was no massive car wreck. There was no something falling on the child. My job is to take care of the patient, and it's not my job to ascertain whether this was abuse or not. We brought in a child abuse team to help us evaluate. From that, they knew that this injury had not just occurred right before the kiddo arrived. Actually, the discussion of how that injury could have happened brought to mind a study. The surgeon came to me and said, you're my research person. I wanna know why do kids get these duodenal transections? And it indeed showed that in a child under two that had this injury, that all of the children were child abuse. And that's how we found that there was a pattern indeed. Our research basically told the nation's trauma centers and pediatric hospitals, if you see this injury in a little one, you should be concerned and take steps to keep a kiddo safe. There's so many facets that just makes this place so beautiful. Without everyone, I don't see how we could function, but when everyone is connected, doing their part, it absolutely makes miracles happen. The baby was in the hospital with us approximately a month. I was so excited um, to see that he kept thriving and getting better, and there was a termination of rights. Social services were starting to say, okay, at some point he's gonna need foster care. Jessica took it upon herself to say, if this baby doesn't have a family and we need to find a family that can uh, safely care for this baby, then I think this baby's a part of my family. One day she told me about this one patient and how she thinks we might be a good match to, to foster. He may have to come home with a feeding tube. Did you, you know? hesitate? I didn't hesitate at all. I was laying down to prep for a night shift and I got a call. CPS chose you. I was like, we have to go to the hospital. 
we're gonna have a baby. We need to get a car seat. Like, what do I pack? And the moment I picked him up out of the crib, I lost it. It doesn't surprise me that this happened here. The people that work here are super caring. I have to be able to pull the joy of the outcome. We've had Lucas since he was eight weeks old. He feels like like blood to me. He's always supposed to be yeah, there. Yeah, he, he's always supposed to be there. It's fun to watch this baby grow up, and I get Christmas cards from her and her family every year. His life made me view every trauma, every sick as not kid, is that we shouldn't give up. He's changed my perspective on what I do and that it's not just a job. And when I get burned out, so what? Keep going, it's worth it. He changed my life completely. I'm not the same person. To the doctors, I wanna say thank you for saving my life and saving other children's lives.